it feels like spring is just around the corner, or at least it does here in Ireland with the relatively mild winters that we get. And we have already started sowing spring crops, as well as the slower growing summer crops, and finalizing plans for the season. Every year I try to grow more, and to explore more, and to develop additional growing spaces, while trying to maintain and hopefully improve the existing gardens and other developed parts of this Red Gardens project. Some years I am more successful at that than others. This season, with the help of Chris, most of the existing growing spaces are in great shape already, and we have plans for significant new developments, as well as strategies for refining and progressing all of the existing gardens. And assuming we're not taking on more than we can manage, it's going to be a busy and interesting season of exploration. We will continue to grow a wide range of vegetables in each of the family scale gardens, which is the most established part of this project, including the extensive garden, which is one of the original gardens that I started with all those years ago. The method that I'm following for this 100 square meter growing space is focused on improving the nutritional quality of vegetables by giving all of the plants lots of space and a lot of focus on providing them with balanced and abundant fertility. And although I've been managing this garden for quite a few years, I was finally planning to try out a version of the recommended fertility that I thought was more suitable for this context. But some additional information has me questioning that strategy, which has prompted a last minute change. And we're going to include a trial of four different primary sources of fertility, integrated into a variation of the usual planting plan that I've been following for this garden. This trial will complicate the management and record keeping for this garden quite a bit, but hopefully it will provide some insights into which one of these forms of nitrogen fertilizer is a better one to use, at least in terms of how it benefits the crops, or if there is any significant difference between them. The intensive garden is right beside the extensive garden, and is also one of the original gardens, but follows a very different focus of trying to grow as much as we can within this limited space. A key focus this year with these intensively cultivated fixed beds is to increase the use of the movable cold frames I built last year for extending the cropping into the shoulder seasons, as well as a focus on getting better at growing a succession of the quick rotation crops. I found it difficult to integrate these relatively fast growing crops into planting plants for the past few years, especially making sure that there's space for successionally sowing these crops every few weeks, and I think the plans for this season will work much better. The no-dig garden is right beside the intensive double-dug garden, which is a radically different approach. This no-dig garden was problematic for quite a few years, but we recently made a shift to a different no-dig method, and it seems that the soil is starting to settle into greater productivity. This season we are shifting the layout and planting plans for this garden to more closely match that of the intensive garden, so that these two gardens can be more directly comparable. Now that we seem to have finally gotten rid of a few problematic weeds, including some persistent patches of scutch grass, it will be interesting to see how well this no-dig garden method compares to its double-dug neighbour. I think the polyculture garden is going to be the garden with the most learning possibilities this year, and will likely continue to be the garden with the most failures. But that is to be expected with so many variables and options, combined with a lack of experience of others that I can build on. This clustered approach to integrating a diverse range of crops that we started using last year was a definite improvement over the more random plantings of previous years. We have also developed the soil quite a bit more, but still need to manage the fertility a lot better in order to reduce competition and possible stress within these densely planted beds. It will be really interesting to see how well the garden produces, and the diversity of interactions and conditions that are created, as well as the increased possibilities of trying a lot of different things within the numerous clusters. The simple garden is right beside the polyculture garden, and is at the opposite ends of the spectrum, being specifically designed to reduce the amount of work and attention that is needed over the full year, while still harvesting a lot of food out of it. There are a few questions that I'm hoping to answer this season, especially relating to the problematic carrot crops that I've been harvesting in the past few years. And it will be interesting to see if the squash and potato crops continue to improve. But the biggest change this season is the large trial of numerous different varieties of onions grown from seed, replacing the usual crop of onions in previous years grown from one variety of sets. 
The polytunnel garden is the most productive out of all of the family scale gardens. With the simple strategy of using a big sheet of plastic covering a steel frame to create a much more productive growing microclimate. It does require a lot more work and attention and the focus this year will be on improving the productivity of key crops while making their management easier. This garden usually produces significant amounts of vegetables in the spring, summer and autumn. But in the past few years, I haven't been great at focusing on the overwintering and early spring crops that are possible in a space like this. But the plan this season is to keep up with the plantings and management right through the entire year to further improve the yield and success of this garden. There is a seventh family scale garden, the perennial garden, which I rarely talk about because it has essentially failed, or I failed to adequately manage it and it has become overgrown with scutch grass and other persistent weeds. So this year I'm going to transplant many of the fruit bushes, globe artichoke, rhubarb and other perennial plants to more appropriate locations and then edge and cover the full garden for at least a year to eliminate the weeds. My plan for next year is to start to use this growing space to explore methods of managing a garden with the bare minimum of external inputs, where all of the fertility and soil building is done through green manures and cover crops but we need to get rid of the weeds first. But while this garden is covered, I plan to use the space for a large pot trial, exploring different amendments, growing medium and fertility management methods in a fairly controlled exploration. I invested in a lot of very large plastic grow bags, which will be filled with soil, compost and different types of amendments. And for the first part of the season, they will grow the same variety of potatoes. These heavy bags will weigh down the ground cover fabric in this garden and hopefully start to provide me with some answers about the relative value of using different composts, biochar, concentrated amendments and soil conditioners, as well as the possibility of some non-soil based growing medium. In addition to the dedicated gardens, which are part of the larger allotment area for the community, we have access to a few other growing spaces and run a couple of side projects in this area. We will be continuing with the One Rule Community Composting Facility, recycling materials from the gardens and the biodegradable waste from quite a few households in the community. This works quite well and provides quite a bit of fertility for the gardens, but there are a few things that I want to adjust to make it easier to manage and to continue to increase the throughput. We have also started to build a covered propagation space that will hopefully be heated by a large compost pile, following on from a successful compost heated shower installation last summer. This will reduce the need for grow lights inside the house and the dependence on electric soil warming cable to provide better growing conditions for seedlings in the spring, and especially for the young heat loving plants such as tomatoes. We also have access to two spaces of ground beside the polytunnel garden. The area on one side has been dug and cleared of weeds and debris and part of it is currently occupied by overwintering leek and beetroot plants that we are growing for seed saving. The rest of this long bed will be re-established as a strawberry patch on one side and space for a large trial of quite a few different varieties of beetroot on the other. The space to the west of this polytunnel is very overgrown with grasses and a few pernicious weeds which is going to take some time and effort to clear fully. The plan, if we have time, is to add a lot of finished compost or to sheet compost with a lot of biomass, cover the whole area with ground cover fabric and to plant squash over all of it, similar to what we've done in the simple garden. In addition to getting a yield out of the space while it is being cleared, I have seeds of a lot of different varieties of squash and pumpkins and this is one of the two semi-sheltered spaces that I want to do a variety trial in. So there is a fair amount going on in this one area, mostly focused on smaller scale growing, but we are also developing a larger growing space on the other side of the road, which I call the black plot. This space has a lot of possibilities, but in the past few years, I've only been managing and growing in one larger polytunnel, focusing on a large crop of tomatoes with a range of other spring and warm season crops fit in around them. This year, the plan is to grow a succession of spring and early crops in this polytunnel, followed by a lot of cucumbers, beans, and other vigorous plants that benefit from the increased warmth and more sheltered microclimate, including sweet corn and melons, which I don't have a lot of experience in growing. 
the large crop of tomatoes, as well as the closely related aubergines and eggplants and the peppers, will be growing in a new polytunnel of the same size that we put up last autumn, with Chris putting in a lot of work over the winter to clear and establish the beds and to cover them with a deep mulch of compost. Rather than planting these beds with spring crops, we decided to keep them empty for the few next few months, keeping them covered with ground cover fabric to make sure any remaining weeds don't regrow. This will allow us to transplant the warm season crops into the ground much earlier than we've been able to in the past, and it'll be interesting to see how this affects their growth and their yield. The three central beds will be planted with a range of varieties of tomatoes, and we will be trying out and comparing several different methods of pruning and supporting these plants. The two side beds will be growing a range of different varieties of aubergine and peppers to see which ones are more suitable to this context and which ones we like to eat. Apart from the two fully established polytunnels, there is a lot of other space that we can grow on in this area, but which first needs to be cleared or heavily mulched, and all of this depends on the amount of time and capacity that we have. In the past few years, developing and managing these larger spaces of the black plot has had a lower priority for me, and I prefer to spend my time on managing the family scale gardens, as I haven't felt that I've had the capacity to be able to deal with these larger spaces. But with everything else largely under control and feeling enthusiastic about the season, we've already started working to bring new areas into production. We have covered the space in between the two polytunnels with ground cover fabric, held down by more of the large grow bags. The plan is to convert the space between the two polytunnels into a series of no-dig beds for quick rotation crops, but I'm not sure that we're going to be able to do that this season. For the time being, it will be the site of another pot trial with another set of large grow bags filled with leftover municipal compost to hold down the ground cover fabric. We are planning to experiment with adding different types of concentrated amendments, fertilizers and liquid feed in order to see which ones are more effective at boosting the growth potential of this fairly low quality bulk compost. For the first part of the season, we will be using these bags to grow early seed potatoes that are left over from the other gardens, some of which will start inside the polytunnel. After the potatoes are harvested, we might empty the grow bags and use the compost to establish the no-dig beds in this space between the two polytunnels. Or we might decide to continue to grow other vegetables in this grow bags with the same material to continue to explore the possibilities of using these large movable containers as part of a larger growing operation. On the other side of the new polytunnel is a large area that we hope to get established for crops this season. On one part of this space, closest to the polytunnel, we are planning to grow the other half of the squash variety trial, using sheet composting and ground cover fabric to see what squash varieties produce well in this climate while clearing the ground for next year. In the other half of this space, we're going to set up a proper trial of different methods of establishing and managing a no-dig growing space. I've wanted to do this for a few years, but finally feel we have the capacity and have collected enough of the different mulch materials to adequately prepare five sections with different no-dig methods. The plan is to establish four or five long beds across all five methods, which will be planted with a range of crops later in the season and for the next few years. In addition to hopefully growing a lot of high quality vegetables, this side-by-side -side comparison should provide us with a much better understanding of the benefits and issues of this range of different no-dig approaches, at least in this context. So that is a lot of different stuff that we're planning to do this year. I usually don't make videos about what I'm planning to do in the different parts of this Red Gardens project, preferring to focus on the things that I've already done and experienced. But with so much more going on this season, I thought it would be useful to give an overview of all the key parts that we will be managing this year, or at least planning to manage. It may turn out to be too much for this season, and something will likely drop, especially if I'm going to try to continue to make videos about it all. I hope to be able to upload more videos this year than I have been able to in the past, as there's so much more going on. But there is a natural conflict within this project between focusing on growing and exploring more and taking the time to properly document everything and to make videos about it all to share with anyone who is interested. Hopefully I will be able to find an appropriate balance between these two critical aspects of this project this year and that I won't be too distracted by the broader events in this crazy world that we live in.